Hi, my friends. Welcome back to Premier Study and Investing. We're continuing on in our exploration of the history of the 20th century by Martin Gilbert. It's been a good ride. We got one more section to go at least, maybe two, uh, depending upon how long I make this. So we're in Chapter 11, and we're coming right into the 1980s. So we have uh, 80,000 Soviet troops were in Afghanistan. They're being attacked by guerrilla forces. The Americans disapproved. They set a grain embargo. European nations also followed suit, but Argentina did not and sold the Soviets the grain that they wanted. So in uh, 1979, Soviets jumped down into Afghanistan and they start that war down there. That's how a lot of the uh, weapons and um, things of that nature ended up really going into Afghanistan in the first place. Uh, so when we talk about some of those later wars that the Americans would, would go on to fight in Afghanistan, kind of got started with that. Um, some ties with uh, Osama bin Laden and you know other other individuals uh, kind of got started in, in that war with the with the Russians. So when the American businesses refused Russia, other nations like France and Germany took the contracts. You know, and they said, "Hey, this is a great opportunity. We'd love to make money. We we'd love to sell it to the Russians." So that's what they did. Americans stayed out of the war between Iraq and Iran over the uh, Shat al Arab waterway. Shat al Arab. Uh, the Iraqis failed, and Iran still had access to the Tigris and Euphrates River. They fought for eight years. Eight years. A lot of people died, and a lot of money was spent. Murder rates rose significantly in America. The number of Americans being murdered was five times the number of Americans that died in Vietnam. Martin Gilbert is always so interesting in this, the way that he writes this book. He's always comparing and contrasting things we don't usually see uh, compared. Uh, tons of people are also still dying in, in auto crashes. Now, we, ha we have the start of the AIDS epidemic. And, uh, you know, it's just kind of like the coronavirus. People didn't know how it was spread, what was going on. I remember seeing videos when I was a kid about people, you know, they thought it was like, uh, could be spread through drinking fountains and all that stuff. Carter speaks at the hostage, uh, of the hostages held in Iran. So you had the Iran-Contra thing going on. Um, you know, he makes threats. Uh, the Ayatollah Khomeini insists the students continue to hold the people hostage. That's really interesting. Nine countries imposed sanctions. Secretly, Carter had agreed on a military action. The plan was to send 90 commandos from Egypt, rendezvous in the Iranian desert, then fly to Tehran. But three of the helicopters had mechanical problems uh, in the rendezvous point, and the operation was canceled. So they tried another secret plan, the Iran-Contra where without informing Congress, they sold illegal arms to the Contra rebels in Nicaragua in order to raise money for the ransom fees that had been demanded. See, probably because there was some rule about you couldn't deal with hostage takers. You, you weren't supposed to, you know, pay out ransom money. So they probably had to do that all uh, in secret, which is why they had to do the secret deal. That's my guess. In Poland, an independent trade union was set up in a communist country, something which had not been attempted previously. So that's... It's kind of interesting the insertion of like capitalistic types of uh, you know trade unions and things like that in a communist country. So people are pushing. We saw that in the last video. Uh, one of the guys in uh, where was it? There was a guy he wanted to have a uh, a human face of fascism, and they brought in all those tanks. And they basically threw him in prison. They said, "No, you're not going to do that." You know, you're going to censor books. You're going to get rid of all this anti-Soviet uh, or anti-communist propaganda stuff. You're going to get back in line, sir. And that's what the guy did. I'm sorry, I can't remember his name, but you can go back and... Uh, is, you know, the point isn't really his name so much as, as getting it right. Kind of the, the sense of the whole thing. The rest of the communist countries were so pissed at the so-called weakness of Poland. The rhetoric machine is cranked up. The Soviets start, you know, threatening, coercing. America makes statements that the Polish have a right to sort out their own rule of government without foreign intervention. Now, the Soviets did not invade. Poland continues on its path away from strict communism. In Czechoslovakia, by contrast, the harassment of the party, police, and secret police were able to enact a strict communism. Now, in the Soviet Union, religions, peoples were arrested for their beliefs. Again, we just see that again and again. Something about the morals that come from religion are a threat to communism, I guess, working at some ideological level. So they start arresting religious people. Uh, but by the cultural, let's see, in China, Christian worship was severely repressed by the cultural revolution was again permitted. So maybe I think by the time they got to the cultural revolution, it was permitted. 
The government gives money to reopen 150 mosques, the Quran, and the Hajj, which is like the travel to Mecca for Muslims, was again permitted. Now in South Africa, Bishop Desmond Tutu had a stronger and stronger voice abroad, and he's not allowed to leave South Africa. Now, so Carter was one of these six, which is pretty interesting, pretty interesting. I mentioned in the last video that people argue that Carter was one of America's maybe worst presidents, very religious guy, Southern Baptist guy, uh, very moral guy, very virtuous guy. Couldn't really find a lot of dirt on the man in his personal life, but just didn't seem to be very successful as a leader of a country. So he only served one term and then, um, oh, I said defeated, but Reagan def defeated, defeated Carter. Not defended, Reagan defeated, so Ronald Reagan, the actor. Now, a German uh, social democrat, Willy Brandt, published findings on global poverty, especially on food security. The northern societies grow more affluent, the southern societies do not, and suffer from global economic trends. Now, some inventions we have, the fax machine, we have the Walkman made by Sony, very cool. And one of the things is that they make it harder for uh, communist governments to control the spread of information and ideas. And that is really, really interesting, I think. Something that I didn't really think of, but it's true. Ethiopia had a civil war, and the UN goes to help the 650,000 refugees. Now there are more than 100,000 Soviet troops in Afghanistan. Afghan refugees are 2.4 million, and they're moving into Pakistan. The UN could only care for about 1.7 million of these refugees, so there was that. That's like a shortage of 700,000 people. That shortage is equal to all the refugees that were in Ethiopia. So, a lot of refugees suddenly. The Soviets are also building more nuclear weapons, and they are spending about 20% of their GDP on this. 20%. I don't know if we're going to see in here that Pakistan also uh, somehow becomes a nuclear power as well. Now, Americans, with their SALT talks, the Strategic Arms Limitation talks, uh, those are going on. America gains, again, bans the export of products to Russia. The problem was less about nuclear bombs and more about Poland, actually, is what Gilbert says. Also, flights from the Polish airline lot were banned from coming to America. So that's, that's interesting. Interesting. So, Americans are really... Huh. Huh, they're not so sure about Poland. I bet I bet that it was uh, too communist for them. It must have been that it was too communist for them. They're still coming out of the Cold War. <laughs> Israel's Prime Minister, Nachem Begin, launched a attack on Iraq's nuclear reactor, which was under construction in Baghdad. The uranium came from France, and everyone wondered if it was for electricity or for bombs. Doesn't that always seem to be the case? Uh, on the occupied West Bank, eight Jewish settlements had been constructed. The Arabs protested at the continued occupation and the expropriation of land, which many of the settlements and the roads leading to them were built upon. There were commercial strikes, student demonstrations, stone throwing, fire bombings. In Gaza, the Israeli governor was killed. In retaliation, the government closed down the main West Bank Institute of Higher Education, Bir Zait University. On October 6th, President Sadat was assassinated in Cairo for making peace with the Israelis. Isn't that so weird, man? He, you know, they went to Maryland. They had the Camp David Accords with Carter. That was probably one of Jimmy Carter's biggest achievements, maybe many people would say. I would say. I mean, I'm, it's just my opinion. I, I can't think of anything that he's more renowned for. Uh, I know that both Menachem Begin and uh, President Sadat, Anwar Sadat, they, they won, um, they won uh, Nobel Peace Prizes, both of them, and then he ends up dying for it. It's, yeah. The UN estimates that half the world's refugees exist in the African continent. 96 countries give about one one-thousandth of their money used in the arms race to help refugees. It equals about $56 per refugee is all that goes out. I mean... Even in the 80s, I mean, how much are you going to really be able to get with 56 bucks? I'm sorry it doesn't say per year, uh, you know, total or whatever per month. I mean, that would be very different. But the World Health Organization pr protests against the use of baby formula for infants and the lack of regulation on cigarettes. Uh, 1982, the British and the Armenians fight over the Falkland Islands. The British win. Britain still has the IRA to deal with, so still dealing with some of that stuff in, over there in Ireland. The PLO, Palestinian Liberation Organization in Lebanon, fire artillery at Israel. No one's killed. Prime Minister Begin, Menachem Begin, orders Israeli troops to go into the south of Lebanon and make a 25-mile buffer for security reasons. I think this thing gets a little out of control. So Ariel Sharon, 
the Minister of Defense. He would later become the Prime Minister. Uh, but Israeli forces go as far north as Beirut. Well, like it's like I mean, I mean more than like maybe two thirds of the way up 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 the country. So Beirut all the way to the capital. They surround the PLO area of West Beirut. They begin artillery bombardment of West Beirut, um, and they do the bombardment for about six weeks. They bring in boats and planes uh, because uh, Beirut is a port city. It sits right on the port. Uh, they bring in boats and the planes, and Ariel Sharon ordered nonstop bombing for 14 hours. The PLO agreed to leave. Yasser Arafat also left Beirut. He goes to Tunis, so Tunisia. There, Americans try for negotiations, but the Israelis refused to relinquish control of the occupied territories. There were pro-Israel guy. There's a pro-Israel guy set uh, to take control of Lebanon. He was a uh, Christian I don't know, phalange, phalange, but he was assassinated. Um, the Muslims take responsibility. So then what happens, the Maronites and the Christians want revenge. Uh, there's this massacre at Sabra and uh, Chatil, Chatila, done on behalf of non-military persons. Uh, so anyways, um, in the book there's pictures of Nelson Mandela where he was kept for 26 years in prison. It's like, remember from uh, yeah, South Africa. He was there from 1964 to 1990. Also, there's pictures in the book of Chinese soldiers reading Mao's Little Red Book, which was kind of like the basics, you know, of how to do, uh, it must have been the Great Leap Forward. Um, so, and then also pictures of the 1969 moon landing, which was, I mean, really a big deal. So the Israelis pull back from Beirut after the PLO leave. Okay, so now the PLO are gone, the Israelis pull back. Okay, Lebanon kind of has their country back. It says they fall back to three to four mile buffer zone. That occupies a small amount of Israeli land. In the years to come, there are continual deaths of soldiers on both sides as Hezbollah come to take control of Lebanon, and they are backed by Iran. Now, the United States President Ronald Reagan gives his evil empire speech about the human rights violations of the Soviet Union. The Sandinista government in Nicaragua uh, was not liked by the Americans. The Contra rebels were... The Contra rebels, rebels were based out of neighboring Honduras, and they fought against the Sandinistas. Now, the Polish people used Church, Churchill's V for victory sign as a symbol for defiance and also for hope. In 1983 in Lebanon, there were Maronite Christian militia. There was the Muslim Amal militia. The Druze, which was like an independent mu Muslim minority, then with the Syrian zone of occupation, within the Syrian zone of occupation. You had the Syrian army, the Palestinians who had remained in Lebanon after evacuation from Beirut to Tunis. You had anti-Syrian fundamentalist Shiite Muslims. Uh, a quite separate Iranian Shiite force. And Israeli troops who were gradually withdrawing during the year. There was a lot of skirmishes between these groups. I mean, as you could uh, imagine. I mean, it's like everybody has their own armed group. They're all... I mean, Lebanon isn't a huge country. And it has, um, you know, the coastal areas are the best for travel. You know, you have a mountain range in the middle. Uh, so, you know, man. So anyways, people are becoming more aware of the environment and environmental health problems. The Helsinki process. The 35 nations signed this. And what it is, it gives freedom of religious practice. The right of work unions, provision for immigration or immigrants to keep their families together. And employment protections. There was a lot of criticism from people during the uh, recent years with... Uh, ICE, what was ICE stand for? It's, a, it's like the agency for immigration control, border control, things like that. You know, they were, they were taking those illegal uh, immigrants who'd cross the border and they were, you know, being accused of splitting their families up and, and all that. Also, we have the book 1984, written by Orwell, just uh, after World War II. shows life under a totalitarian world order. You can get that movie as well um, if you want to just get the basic idea. Poland, uh, the other one that's really similar to that is Brave New World. It's something that really people, it's been very popular for years. It's a novel, um, similar kind of thing. High degree of political control, control over sex, religion, thought control, stuff like that. So Poland sees more freedoms, which make people in Czechoslovakia jealous. You have Charter 77 was published that advocate for human rights. The Sikhs, which um, Sikhs in India, was political and had religious autonomy. Uh, they take the Golden Temple at Amistar. Oh, Amistar? Amris? 
Amherst, <laughs> um, Amritsar, Amritsar, I wonder if I spelled that wrong. A month later, Indira Gandhi is assassinated by the Sikhs, who were, oh, her hired bodyguards, man, who can you trust? Ethiopia has another drought. The IRA forces are still trying to remove the British up there in Ireland, Scotland maybe, probably Ireland. Desmond Tutu wins the Nobel Peace Prize in 1984. Desmond Tutu, uh, what was that book? Now, there's this movie um, about the Hutu and the Tutsis. Hotel Rwanda, in Rwanda, yeah, yeah. I'm not sure where Desmond Tutu was from. I need to put that in the video. In 1985, Mikhail Gorbachev becomes the Secretary General of the Communist Party. Boris Yeltsin is put in charge of construction. Gorbachev starts a restructuring program to stop bribes and corruption. Poland now seems repressed, again, with more political crimes that lead to jail time. Colonel Gaddafi comes to rule in Libya, and he was there for a long time. I think he was in power for like 40 years. Uh, they had a lot of oil. He became very wealthy. I, I don't know if that you know, trickled down to the society. I don't think it did, but still they had a lot of money and he was in power for a long time. Ethiopians remember that they got uh, rid of, what was it, smallpox? The Americans spent that money to get rid of smallpox there, I think. But the Ethiopians, because of, of famine, are, are sent out. About 25,000 go to Israel. It's interesting. Sri Lanka sees the Tamil Tigers. A separatist group rise up and get stronger over the course of the decade. And this is not India, okay? It's not uh, Tamil Nadu in India. This is rather in Sri Lanka. So we have the Chernobyl meltdown. The main effect was cancer. No one really knew what would happen with genetic mutations, etc. In Afghanistan, you have the uh, Mujahideen. Mujahideen. They had eight years of fighting. They had five million refugees. Going back to Libya, Gaddafi was sponsoring terrorism in many parts of the world. Um, there, the U.S. was involved in violent conflict. There, I would have to assume, was in Libya. The American Challenger space shuttle exploded. I mean, the space exploration program was suspended. I remember that, actually. Like, 85. South Yemen. Rival factions of Marxist government resulted in 13,000 Yemenis dead. Oh, man, and Yemen is really in a mess. Uh, last year, they had, like, a huge cholera outbreak. People weren't, they weren't able to get rid of the trash. There was, like, a rebel group. They had been bombed a lot in their major port by Saudi Air Force. Um, it's just really, really tough. So that was South Yemen in the 80s. Well, I'm, I'm talking about recently, but South Yemen, rival factions of Marxist government resulted in 13,000 dead. In Beirut, you have Muslims fighting against Muslims. Civil war in Sri Lanka is in its fifth year at this point. The Indian government tries to mediate a solution. There is a ceasefire. The Indian troops come in to make peace, but they get drawn into the fighting. Everything escalates. Finally, Jaffna was under control, but the Indian army had found... Uh, they did find a way to end the fighting. So that, that's good. Finally, they did. Um, in Kosovo, a province in Yugoslavia, the Albanian majority classes, clashes with the Serbs. And these are ethnic differences, of course. But I think perhaps... I can't remember who's Catholic and who's Muslim. Yeah, I, it's always hard for me to keep that straight. I'll try to leave a note. So single European act. The aim was to transform relations as a whole among these uh, state into a European Union. So from many states into one single... European Union. People start meeting uh, about uh, the ozone depletion, so environmental, greenhouse gases, all that stuff, started in the 80s, huh? 1988, Mikhail Gorbachev announced the withdrawal of the Soviet troops from Afghanistan, so they were there from 79 to 88, so 10 years, I guess. Hunger was becoming more politically open and permissive. Kurds in Halabja were killed with chemical weapons by Saddam Hussein, so Kurds and uh, Kurdistan in the north. Um, Iran damages an American warship, and there's a small retaliation. Nelson Mandela is finally released from prison. Human rights were under attack in many parts of the world. The World Health Organization is now concerned about air quality. Czechoslovakia is still repressive. Poland sees martial law imposed in order to, I guess, crack down and get people in order as far as um, they're obviously becoming more and more strict in their communism. You have the human chain, where people hold hands in protest on the 50th anniversary of the Nazi Soviet pact. Ah. Germany, you have East Berlin. There's 750,000 protesters in East Berlin. Communist government, or the East German government, is still in power. They announced that the Berlin Wall would be dismantled. It was 850 miles long. Bulgarians, 
they wanted it into communism. You have the anti... Oh, man. So many vowels in a row. I'll just let you guys read it. I don't really know how to say that. Siarasuku in uh, Bucharest, Hungary. They're very pissed. They're upset. The army's called in. The army kills the protesters. People want to overthrow the government. Um, oh, this was a person's name who was the leader. It says he and his wife escaped by helicopter. They're captured two days later. They're tried. They're found guilty of, of genocide and corruption, and they're shot. They're shot dead. Now, they install a non-communist president, president in Czechoslovakia, the first non-communist in 40 years. This is Czechoslovakia. Going over to China, it has its own violation of human rights. You have the Tiananmen Square protest with very uh, popular, that tank man, man, single man standing in front of that tank. Um, and we'll look more at that because we're going to look at another book about China, which is really interesting. A Fragile Superpower, which is the name of that, which is such an interesting oxymoron, right? Fragile Superpower. I like that. I really, really love that that title. So we'll look more in depth uh, if you stick around. We'll try to do it. We'll try to cover that. I got the notes. Just got to do the video for it. You got an oil tanker crashes in Alaska. Rainforests in South America are being burned. So just industrialization, more people. You know. Chapter 12. I bet it's Brave New World, but Brave, Brave, Brave New World, probably 1990 to 1999. So in Romania, the secret police, the Securitate was abolished, Romania, okay. Also amnesty for everyone sentenced for political offenses. Interesting. Could you imagine? I mean, it's so crazy to me living in a place where you can go to jail for your political thoughts. Man, that's something. Armenians and Azeris, so from Azerbaijan, were killed in ethnic clashes. Azerbaijan declared war on Armenia. Gorbachev agreed to withdraw all troops from Czechoslovakia. The Soviet Communist Party gave up its construction right to be the leading role in the construction of the state. Soviet Communist Party gave up its constitutional right to be the quote-unquote leading role in the structure of the state. So I wonder who was the new one. Lithuania declared independence, and it was the first Baltic Republic to break away from the USSR. Ah, Lithuania, the first to break free. Soviet tanks drove through Lithuania. They drove up to the parliament building, they waited a few hours, and then they withdrew. Two weeks later, the Latvian parliament also declared independence as a republic, then Estonia, so it's kind of a domino effect. The Czech and Hungarians choose leaders. The Hungarian president, Arpad Gontz, withdraws Hungary from the Warsaw Pact. Again, the Warsaw Pact was, wasn't it? Freedom of religion, freedom of... I have to look at that again. Nelson Mandela is still in prison, but on the verge of release and entry into South Africa. South African press restrictions were lifted. All political or ideological enemies were sent to prison for their beliefs. They were released. Prime Minister Willem de Klerk, the season of violence is over, he said. The time for reconciliation and reconstruction has come. Uh, now, Gilbert says this wasn't exactly true. Many blacks were still being killed as a result of the changes. Uh, but, you know, politicians, I mean, they want to at least say the right thing for morale or, or whatever for their political agenda. But in Somalia, the armed forces under control of President Mohammed uh, Sayyad Bari murdered 5,000 civilians. It's in Somalia. You have uh, savagery in Sri Lankan civil war. You still have the Tamil Tigers, the forces from India. Now they could not keep the peace, and so they withdrew from the, from the island. The Indian troops had apparently been there for three years. Saddam Hussein invades Kuwait. President Bush, H.W. Uh, yeah, H.W. No, H.G. I can't remember his own names. But the older one, senior, goes uh, in claiming appeasement, but it doesn't work and then compares Saddam to Hitler. Now, Margaret Thatcher sends 8,000 British troops to the Iraq-Saudi border as a protective shield against Iraqi forces. Saddam releases Western hostages in Iraq and Kuwait. Ah, uh, yes, Saddam had the fourth largest army at this time, so you could see why Saudi was in trouble. Also, Saudi, you know, they, I mean, they were 
maybe making money from the oil, but not like they are today. You know, they probably didn't have the Air Force. And I mean, Saddam, the fourth largest army in the world. So, you know, um, as many of his soldiers were experienced after fighting with Iran. So not only the numbers and the size, but they had the experience as well. So the Americans start Operation Desert Storm. Within 24 hours, the Iraqi air defense system was destroyed. Saddam was very upset. He starts shooting Scud missiles at Israel, leading to damage, but not deaths. The Americans used the Patriot missile as an anti-Scud missile solution. Iraq begins pumping uh, the Kuwaiti oil right into the Gulf, right into the sea. Now, the Iraqi troops cross into Saudi. They're... Uh, but they were driven back after two days. Saddam, Saddam goes for a scorched earth policy. Americans demand uh, withdrawal from Iraq. Saddam refuses. American ground forces go in. 20,000 Iraqis surrender the same day. Then Saddam announces the withdrawal of forces from Kuwait. However, they would take as much loot with them as possible. Reminds me of that movie Three Kings. Wait, uh, who was that? Uh, so Ice Cube was one guy, and then Mark Wahlberg was in there as well. They were trying to steal all that gold bullion, but anyways. But without air defenses, the Americans uh, destroyed the convoy, uh, trying to steal all the loot, and everyone in the world saw it. Then protests come from the Shiites in the south and the Kurds in the north. Saddam takes immediate action to stop these by using his army against civilians. Iraq was forced to agree to a UN inspections team and their task was to find weapons of mass destruction. Now Gorbachev, feeling the Soviet Union slip away, sent troops to the independent Lithuania in order to secure the ra ratio of, ratio? To secure the radio and television stations? Okay, so there's protests, there was deaths, there was international condemnation. Now in Minsk, the capital of Belarus, they're calling for their own independence. Gorbachev authorizes the dissolving of the Warsaw Pact. Okay. And then Boris Yeltsin, uh, you know, banned the Communist Party from all workplaces and all government establishments. Wow. I said, really? Wow. Banned it. Banned the Communist Party completely from the workplaces? And all government establishments. I mean, that is really interesting. I was surprised. I mean, that's a really fast change. Um, there was an attempted coup as some civilians barricaded around the parliament building in Moscow from the first hours. Yeltsin opposed the, the coup. He called Western leaders also to denounce it. Now Armenia declares in its own independence. Gorbachev resigned. But he saw that his last move was to dissolve the Communist Central Committee, which had been the ruling authority since 1917. The USSR was disintegrating. Moldavia, Moldavia, excuse me, Moldavia declares independence, taking the name Moldova. Uh, Belarusia declares independence and takes the name Belarus. Ukraine votes with 90%, one in total separation from the USSR. Three weeks later, three former Soviet republics, the Russian Federation, Belarus, and Ukraine, establish a commonwealth of independent states. Now, Kazakhstan was the last to break away from the Soviet Union. In a similar way to the USSR, Yugoslavia was also disintegrating into smaller parts. As Croatia and Slovenia declared their independence, the big problem was with states like Bosnia, Herzegovina, which declared independence, which their problem was that they had Muslims, they had Croats, they had Serbs, and that these people really could not uh, seem to work together or live together. So what are you going to do if, if you have a new state and that's the situation? Now, Tirana was the Albanian capital. Bangladesh loses many people and assets to a 165 mile per hour cyclone. We have 20,000 who are dead in Somalia. The Civil War is making it impossible to get food aid to the starving and the malnourished. And I remember that too. There was all these kids always on the TV. They were asking for money. Help these kids. Bloated stomachs. Now Czechoslovakia splits into the Czech Republic with its capital in Prague. And the other part was Slovakia with its capital uh, Bratislava. Now in Israel... Uh, Yitzhak Rain is re-elected for prime minister. He ordered a freeze on new construction on settlement buildings in the West Bank and Gaza. And there was actually 800 Palestinians that were released. 
Sri Lanka sees its 10th year of civil war fighting. Rio de Janeiro has its first Earth Summit. That's good. Lots of cars are hitting the Indian streets. There's a lot of pollution. And uh, I was in India oh, well, a long time ago, but they were talking about the amount of money that goes to road building, to all the new cars that are continuing to hit the streets with their over 1 billion people that are living there. And so how that is just so much clogging up the city. It makes it really hard for urban planning, for utilities, for housing prices. 5,000 people a day are starving to death in Somalia. The aid is dropped uh, from helicopters or airplanes, but it's often looted. Once there's 300,000 people um, who starve, Bush decides he's sending in troops. He sends in 28,000 American troops to the capital, Mogadishu. They're able to bring uh, in food, and it was nice for everyone to see military, military forces could be used to save human life rather than destroy it. Non-military uh, U.S. aid hits its record high. Israel and Egypt are the number one and number two recipients. Almost every African country was a recipient of American aid. The biggest recipient of U.S. military aid was Saudi. Interesting. Spain and Germany buy a lot of American arms. Hmm. Interesting. The, uh, what do they call that? Military industrial complex, yes. So, war is a business. Definitely war is a business. There's coming companies, war companies traded on the S&P 500. Information satellite companies, reconnaissance companies, you know, missile makers, all kinds of stuff. A uh, satellite program used to find missiles was launched by the American under the name Brilliant Eyes and Brilliant Pebbles. Brilliant Eyes, okay, but Brilliant Pebbles? I don't know about that. Clinton stops the program saying that the Cold War had come to an end, but George W. Bush restarted the program. You have NAFTA, which links Mexico, the United States, and Canada, the North America Free Trade Agreement, and it's the world's largest free trade agreement. In the Persian Gulf, Saddam places surface-to-air missiles in a no-fly zone. Hmm, yeah, I probably can't do that. The international community complains. Then, with an, uh, international support, the U.S. bombs strategic targets. The Serbs, who are the primary group in Yugoslavian military, ignore a no-fly zone over Bosnia. What is the intifada with Israel, or the Israelis at rights? Good question. After many years of ignoring Arafat's PLO, the Israelis finally agreed to meet with him outside of Oslo, Norway. The intifada apparently was an Israeli-led violence against Palestinians in Gaza. 100 Palestinians died that year. 11 deaths for the Israelis were counted. The Palestinians, the fighters, were mostly part of Hamas. Uh, and Islamic Jihad, who killed 200 fellow Palestinians who were supporters of compromise. Isn't that interesting, man? Like, they turned on their own people because... That's uh, so weird. Well, anyway, the Oslo Accord stated um, where the PLO becomes a partner. The Israelis approve of Palestinian self-rule in Gaza Strip and Jericho. It could fly its flag, it could raise taxes, it could administer government affairs, and it could continue to work towards self-rule in the West Bank area. Huh. Now there's more who were killed by the IRA bombings in Ireland. People say it would be unfair to create a united Ireland if the majority of the people in North Ireland do not want this. A white student is killed by blacks in South Africa. Clinton, President Clinton, uh, tries for social reforms, but is stopped by Republicans. In Israel, Yitzhak Rabin continues to push for agreement with Palestinians. The Cairo Agreement, later known as Oslo One, established a Palestinian authority to be headed by Yasser Arafat with, quote, legislative, executive, and judicial powers and responsibilities, including their own armed police force and full control over security, education, health care, and welfare programs. Israel would contain control of foreign affairs and defense. Arafat assumed the title chairman of the Palestinian Authority, and Arafat is the Ra'is, like the head, the leader. Uh, it's an Arabic word. I don't know a lot of them, but I know that one. Shockingly, a few days later, Arafat goes into a mosque in South Africa and talks about how Palestinians would continue their jihad until they're liberated uh, they've liberated Jerusalem. Now, <laughs> this is interesting because it gets into, I think, a pretty big wordplay. Everyone in Israel was shocked, right? Four days later, 
uh, Israeli forces withdraw from Jericho and the Gaza Strip. However, there were 16 Jewish settlements that remained in the Gaza Strip, which housed about 5,000 Israelis. Now, the European Union sends Arafat money, but they wanted an audit of his accounting systems, and he refuses, so they stop giving. Now, Prime Minister Rabin, the Israeli Prime Minister, also reaches out to King Hussein and Jordan in order to end their long-standing declaration of quote-unquote war against each other, even though they had not been engaged in warfare. Now, Jordan lost some land, the East Jerusalem and West Bank in 1967, uh, so they had, at least on paper, been at war ever since. Now remember Schnulz Nitzen, the, uh, the writer, the Gulag Archipelago, the, uh, he won the Nobel Peace Prize, I believe, or at least nominated for it. After 20 years of exile, he was in Germany, exiled in prison, uh, I believe in prison, returned to Russia, and is appalled to see the poverty, the ostentatious wealth, the new class of super rich, the gangs. I mean, he was pissed, he was angry, you know, he was really upset, he spoke out about about the sham democracy, about the super rich, about the capitalistic powers at the top. And you had Dudayev, a Muslim in Chechnya, claims to be the new president. Russia and Chechen troops fight. The war continues even as losses are more for the Chechens. And Nelson Mandela becomes the president, president, right? Prisoner to president in South Africa. What a story. I don't know if it's a, I don't know, it seems tragic. Definitely tragic, maybe glorious in another sense, I'm not sure. In Rwanda, the Hutus have 7 million, the Tutsis have 600,000, and but the Tutsis are the ruling party. Well, 500,000 Tutsis are killed, so pretty much all of them. The Croat forces cross into Bosnia with 10,000 troops. Now 100,000 Croat troops are advancing into Serb-held areas of Croatia. International sympathy for Bosnian Serbs goes out to those living in Kenin. In the end, Bosnian Serbs would not be allowed to join Serbia. Also, man, that stinks. Also, Bosnian Croats would not be able to join Croatia. The sovereign independence of Bosnia would be maintained. During the con conflict, there was about 200,000 people who died, and about 2 million became homeless. When Rwanda, the Tutsis had their revenge within a year as they used the army and parliament to close camps, which was basically, i.e., to kill the Hutu guerrillas. The PLO rule would be extended to the West Bank through bombing. Now we have the Oslo II Accords, and this time we have Arafat and Rabin from Israel. They had their second meeting, and it provided a timetable for the extension of Palestinian rule. More power is given to the Palestinian. It passes 61 to 59, barely, barely it passes. The Jews are very upset, they're pissed, saying that Rubin gave away the homeland. They sang a song written after the war of 1973 about having peace. Leaving the meeting, he shot in the back. His murderer was a law student, saying, I acted alone on God's orders, I have no regrets. Shimon Perez succeeds him. Man, Perez was determined to honor the agreement of Rubin. In South Africa, the Truth and Reconciliation Commission is set up to hear from all sections of the population about responsibility for the violence of the apartheid years. Jews are pissed. Now they want to kill Arabs and uh, Perez. Huh. Huh. Uh, so they killed Rabin and then it's still not enough. They want to go after Arabs, they want to go after their new prime minister. March. 31st, Hezbollah in southern Lebanon launches a series of rocket attacks. Israel under Perez orders retaliatory airstrikes. The PLO agreed to strike out of its charter all references to the destruction of Israel. Perez calls it the most important ideological change of the century. That's actually, that's pretty interesting, man. Wow. Well, then... Benjamin Netanyahu wins the next election in Israel. He now becomes the next prime minister. He met with Yasser Arafat in Washington, D.C., but apparently it did not matter. It was of no consequence. There is a partial withdrawal of Russian troops from Chechnya. You see the Taliban take over Afghanistan. You know, Taliban means two students. 
two two male students. So I don't know how they came up with their name beyond that, but I always thought that was interesting. Um, they ended the education of women. You have adulterers, men, and women were stoned to death. So uh, anybody who committed adultery, it's pretty interesting stuff. Uh, floods in North Korea draw the attention of the World Health Organization. It becomes known that half the world's wealth is owned by 385 people. 19 countries have lower GDP in the year 2000 than they did 40 years previously, so that would obviously be adjusted for inflation. So in real terms, uh, man, so than they did in 1960. Tony Blair is elected by the Labour Party in, uh, in the UK, so uh, British. British, uh, yeah. And then Sinn Féin, who are they? I'm not sure. Fighting restarts in Kosovo between Albanian nationals and the Serbs. Yeah, Benjamin Netanyahu agreed to transfer 80% of Hebron, a city, to join seven other cities that were already under Palestinian, Palestinian control. Still, somehow violence erupts. It's like at any time there's something, some change with this. There's more violence. Clinton wins a second term in the United States. You have Kenneth Starr investigated uh, Clinton. This brought forward the uh, sexual allegations with the whole Monica Lewinsky deal. Now, I don't know, maybe Ken Starr was investigating Clinton on something else and came up with this. I'm not sure about that, but I think that's right. Anyway, Clinton Boris Yeltsin from Russia go to a summit in Helsinki in Finland. Uh, Russia makes friends with NATO. Diana, Prince of Wales, dies in a car crash in Paris. Everyone loves her. I never understood. I mean, she was a beautiful woman, but I, I mean, and you know, but I mean, it was like they really, 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 really seemed to love her. I don't know what she did or anything much about her life, um, but she was definitely celebrated. Uh, in Egypt, Muslims attack tourists. In 1997, world chess champion Gary uh, Kasparov was defeated by Deep Blue, a supercomputer constructed in the United States. President Milosevic tries to stop the Serbian attacks and open up negotiations with the Kosovo uh, Albanians. Clinton wanted NATO to accept Poland, Hungary, and the Czech Republic. He said this would reduce the prospect of Americans ever being called again to fight in the battlefields of Europe. In Ireland, finally everyone agrees to the Good Friday Accord, the uh, politicians celebrate and proclaim peace. 30 days later, an IRA bomb goes off and kills 30 Catholics. Didn't do anything. It didn't do anything. It didn't have consensus, obviously. Now you have Kofi Amon. He's a black American who was born in Ghana. He becomes the head of the United Nations as its general secretary. Uh, India starts testing nuclear bombs underground. Man. This uh, Milosevic was the president of Serbia, whose capital was in Belgrade. Uh, president Clinton was impeached by the House of Representatives. He was acquitted in the Senate. Netanyahu's government is defeated by Ehud Barak, a former commander-in-chief in Israel. Syria still has the Golan Heights, and Barak makes a generous offer to Syria and to Arafat, but neither leader wants to make a deal for the Golan Heights. I mean, go figure. I mean, all the violence that occurred every time land was changing hands. The war between NATO and Serbia ended when Milosevic, unable to oppose Serb popular discontent at the conflict, and the air bombardment of Bel Belgrade, uh, they agreed to withdraw his troops from Kosovo. There's about 7,000 Serbs that die from seven days, 70 days of bombing from NATO air raids. When NATO came in, they found genocide, they found burial grounds, Milosevic is found guilty of war crimes by the Hague, he's actually hung, that's how he dies. By the end of the century, the world population hits 6 billion. Churchill said, in it, the common man has suffered the most, and there were 21 million refugees at that time. So that's the end of the book, that takes us, I think, up to 1990, and uh, that's how the book ends. So. Uh, it's a long book. There's there's a lot of details. I hope seeing these videos gives you I try to basically just give the main ideas and uh, I really try to capture the best ones because it's a long read. It's a lot of work. I hope you guys enjoyed. This was again uh, Martin Gilbert's history of the 20th century. Okay, thanks so much. 
Hey, check us out for more videos. We're going to continue to roll through the FSOT stuff, the China books, uh, other books, um, Why Nations Fail. Probably end up looking at uh, the, the work done by the UCLA professor, Jared Diamond, on uh, was it guns, steel, germs. I don't know. That's probably not the right order. So we're going to continue to roll through this stuff. It's very, very, very interesting. And the most interesting thing is like why nations fail. They do not agree with Jared Diamond's analysis. They don't think that it has something to do with the bringing about of say like beasts of burden uh, that, you know, freed up people to have more time in order to be able to invest in do things like research or uh, metallurgy or things like this. Uh, they say, no, no, it's very, very, very different. It very, very much relies upon the ability of people to uh, rule, um, to, uh, it's more government driven. It's more um, about rights, about the uh, ability to utilize your people and your resources by sharing power and not concentrating all the power into like a super uh, wealthy elite. So uh, we can, we're gonna get into all that. Uh, thanks so much.